Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Day Spring Discussions. I am your host, Sean McGahey, and this is the show where we talk about comic books, movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. Joining me today to geek out is Mr. Joshua Del Angel. Josh, what is going on? Good morning, man. I am super excited about uh, today's session, man. Man, we had a crap load of trailers drop last week. Not only last week, but last night. So let's just get right into it if you want to. Let's dive right into it, man. All, All right. right. So let's start with the newest one. Last night, they premiered the trailer for the newest Independence Day film, Independence Day Resurgence. This one takes place 20 years after... The original Independence Day film, which starred Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman, and Will Smith. Absent from this sequel, though, is Mr. Will Smith. He is not going to be in this one. But Jeff Goldblum and Bill Pullman are back, as well as Vivica A. Fox, too. And they're going to defend themselves once again from an alien menace that is coming. Not really a lot known about the aliens. I don't think this trailer gave a lot away. But what do you think about it, man? Uh, well, now that we're talking about the aliens, did you notice at the end of the trailer they have the, the, the title? I kind of saw the alien's head in the title a I little didn't bit. I didn't notice. No, really? Yeah, there's a little bit of a shadow there, so it kind of reminded me of the original aliens, which is I. If they bring back the original villains, I think would be awesome. I, I love the aliens, man, in the first one. Yeah, I mean, scary. I'm, <laughs> they were scary. I'm not sure because originally the in the film. They, the aliens, their whole civilization allegedly traveled, and of course they took them all out. So I feel like they took out the entire alien race. Of course, there's probably more of them, or maybe this is a different alien race. Yeah. Which would kind of change it up. Sure would. So is Will Smith not going to be involved? Not going to be in it at all. His character's gone. No, he's. I don't know what happened. They to recast him. it. So in? when I was looking at the trailer, I had to look this up, okay? Because you had the girl in there, um, who was kind of seemed like she was Bill Pullman's daughter. President Whitmore's daughter, but it's a different actress. And that actress who originally played his daughter in the film, I forget what her name is, but she's a working actress. She's been in the show Parenthood, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Okay. I like her as an actress. I don't know why they didn't bring her back. I don't know why they recast that part. Maybe it's because she couldn't do it because she was busy, or maybe they just didn't ask her to come back. I don't know. But yeah, I looked it up on IMDb. Patricia Whitmore is played by Micaiah Moore. So that girl in the trailer who is not only, you know, looks concerned for Bill Pullman's character, but also looks like she's hooking up with uh, Liam Hemsworth as well. That's going to be the little girl from the first film. And then I also looked it up as well. The young black man who was in it, his character's name is Dylan Hiller, which of course Dylan was the young kid That's right. in the first film as well. That's cool. So he's obviously grown up. He, I saw him in the jet, so he's taking on or filling his stepfather's role as the fighter jet okay. pilot. Okay, that's cool. Which is cool. Um, he took the name of his stepfather, looks like Hiller as well. So we don't know what happened to Will Smith's character. We know Will Smith doesn't want to be in the film or didn't want to be in the film. So they probably either had to say he died or something, right off. Yeah. I believe. Now, the, the, the funniest part of the trailer for me was there was a shot of Vivica A. Fox, and she was in a, a doctor's white coat. And I'm like, didn't she play a stripper in the last movie? <laughs> How did she go from being like a stripper to a doctor or scientist type character? It was a doctor-themed night at the strip club, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> she just had the white coat. Don't be fooled by the white coat. That's thing. exactly what it was. But, I mean, I'm always hesitant about this film because the original film was 20 years ago. It was a blockbuster hit. I loved it. I saw it twice in theaters. It came out a few days before my birthday, so I saw it the day it came out. And then for my birthday, I, my parents took me and some of my friends to go see it again as well. That was a Will Smith-centered film. Will Smith is not going to be in the sequel, and it's 20 years later. Usually films that take 20 years to do a sequel, it's because the actors and the directors and the filmmakers, their careers have usually died down and they need a hit. So they come back with a blockbuster like this. And the fact that this film doesn't have its main star Will Smith in it has me a little worried. Worried, yes. Um, I was impressed with the trailer and the setup of the whole thing. Uh, I'm... I was impressed with Jeff Goldblum's performance in the trailer. Um, that The little that we saw of him, uh, I've only seen him in commercials recently, so uh, I wasn't sure if he still had it. Wait, did you ever finish uh, The League? Uh, no, I never. Remember? I'm on season three. 
Okay, so you haven't... So he's in the league, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. He's, he's coming up. I don't know what season he pops in, but he's in the league as well. He's been in yet. a couple other things, but he's he's keeping busy. Okay. Definitely. I've only seen him in the But commercials. when he first appeared on screen, my first thought was, it's Ian Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, wait, no. Wrong franchise. <laughs> uh, that's, what I, that's the first character I think of, definitely. Uh, Ian Malcolm. But um, I think he'll be able to reprise his role, and uh, the yeah. film looks dark, dude. It, it looks, does. It looks, you know, that newer version of an alien film. I just, I don't know what to expect. I'm, of course, I'm hesitant about it. The trailer looked good, though. So for that, I'm excited for it. I will definitely, of course, even if it's good or bad, I'll probably go see it. How about uh, Bill Pullman with a beard, man? I know. Bill Pullman, he's a rocket. I'm a bit, I like Bill Pullman. He's never let me down. So I'm all about that. Even going back to, you know... Many years when he did Casper and all that. And while you were sleeping. While you were sleeping. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. Yes, that film, too. So that's a cool one. So moving on to our next trailer, actually, was another kind of oldie coming out. The Legend of Tarzan trailer has premiered. <laughs> so with this, we see Tarzan played by, by Alexander Skarsgård, who is in True Blood. And then we also have Jane played by Margot Robbie. In this one, allegedly, Tarzan has come to civilization, or England, and is living his life as John Clayton III, but something happens to where he has to go back to the jungle, has to reprise his role as King of the Jungle as well, and it looks like he's going to be facing off against Christoph Waltz, who's going to be the villain, and then also the film stars Samuel Jackson as well. The film is directed by David Yates, who is, has done the last four Harry Potter films, including both Deathly Hollows. Mm. This Tarzan is a kind of a mixed bag. There was an 80s Tarzan film with Christopher Lambert in it that was eh. Then you had another one in the 90s with Casper Van Dien. Did you ever see that one? I didn't see the 90s one. Oh my god, it was so horrible. It was hilarious. See, I'm a fan of like, Christopher Lambert. It's like, so. it's John, it's Johnny Rico. You know, but no. Oh from, my god. Yeah, and no. I'm glad yeah, I never Casper saw that. Yeah. Wow. Casper Van Dien from Starship Troopers, he was playing Tarzan. It was not good. But the most famous version of Tarzan, I think now, is the Disney version that they have. Yeah. They uh, did the animated film, and then there was... The direct-to-DVD sequel, which happens with a lot of Disney animated films. And then I think they also had an animated cartoon for a little while, too. So this is bringing Tarzan back into the light. Looks like it's going to be a lot more serious take. I really like David Yates and what he did with the Harry Potter films. Those last couple films, of course, were my favorite. So I'm willing to give this one some hope, especially given the cast of Margot Robbie, Christoph Waltz, Samuel Jackson... I'm not a big fan of Alexander Skarsgård. True Blood lost me after I'm not the first. With him at all, True yeah. Blood lost me after the first season, so his work I'm not as familiar with. But I'm interested in the film. Yeah, as the overall feel of the film that I got from the trailer, it seems a little bit like a King Kong type vibe to it, man. Like it just the the apes seem huge. Uh, the characters, yeah. the, char the the theme overall, it kind of gave me that same King Kong vibe. Um, but yeah, I don't really know much about Tarzan himself. You watched the uh, the Disney movie though, right? I, oh man, okay. come on, Phil Collins. I mean, you couldn't yeah, go wrong man, with that movie. Soundtrack. That's a classic. Um, but and I, honestly, I'm a big fan of Christopher Lambert, uh, The Grey Stroke. That, um, that I own that as it was one of my favorite. Group oh, really? That. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think we're due for a Tarzan film. Maybe. I think we're due for a good Tarzan film, really, man. Yeah. I would love to. See, you know, the, one thing I always loved in the Disney film was how he was. Um, what do they call it? Vine surfing or whatever? Where he would like just kind of go to the vine. I want to see uh, Alexander Skarsgård do that, man. And that would be do hilarious. That with today's technology, they man. Could. And that's the thing too is like you have the, the the apes are all CG. It looks like in this movie. Looks like it. Little disappointed in that, but to get probably the, the portrayal or action that they want the apes to do, you got to do CG, I think. And, Which is fine. And part of what makes Tarzan the, the tar, you know, unique is his relationship with the apes. Yeah. So you are going to have some dialogue, so to speak, between... You don't think the, the apes aren't going to talk, though. No, like, they're not going to talk, gonna but talk there will English. be some communication somewhere. Communication, okay. I can see, so like, you're... ape sounds, yes. I want to see ape sounds. I don't want to see the monkeys actually talk like it's a Disney movie. Maybe he's crazy I mean, when he's in the jungle. Well, and he is crazy. I mean, they could do, like, ape sounds and have, like... Subtitles? Yeah. I like could Planet see that. of the Apes type thing? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Definitely. But yeah, that's cool. So now we're going to move on to the last two here. 
I'm gonna be very passionate about these last two. Yeah. Very passionate about these last two, so I might go on for a while, just, just bear with me. I don't even know what order you're going in. Well, we're gonna save the best for last, <laughs> okay? Right. Next, we're moving on to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sequel, Out of the Shadows. It dropped online. This is, of course, the sequel to the 2014 reboot. In it, we see new characters arrive, like Bebop and Rocksteady, played by Gary Anthony Williams and WWE champion Sheamus. We see Casey Jones, played by Aero star Stephen Amell. And we see Baxter Stockman, played by Tyler Perry. Of course, returning is going to be Megan Fox as April O'Neil and Will Arnett as Vern Fenwick. Now, this one is said to be a little bit closer in tone to the beloved 80s and 90s cartoon. It's going to be directed by Dave Green, who directed the film Earth to Echo, and it is scheduled for release June 3rd, 2016. Last week, we talked about Batman, Superman, or Batman Ninja Turtles comic. I kind of expressed my love for the Ninja Turtle franchise and how much I grew up on it, how much I value it very much, and how much I hated this last 2014 <laughs> film. Despise. So I'm going to take the lead on this one, if you don't mind. Take it. Okay. The 2014 film was horrible. Hated it. Megan Fox, horrible actress. She was the main star in the movie. That's one of the reasons why it was so bad. But also, I've talked. we talked about this the other day. I said, the thing they did wrong that the 1990 movie did was the focus in this newer one was on April and the humans and not on the turtles. And that's kind of where a lot of these franchises are going. Like Transformers, for instance. That was all about the humans in it and not about the Transformers. The, people show up to these films to see the Transformers. They show up to see the Ninja Turtles. They need to be the focus of the film. They need to be the ones going through the character arcs and the heroes I think need to be the supporting cast as opposed to the opposite. So here we have a sequel to this film. I gotta admit when I saw it I was like first time I was like oh my god this looks so ridiculous and then I watched it again and then I watched it again I'm just like okay I might just see this in theaters okay. For, there are several things that won me over like they said the tone of it is very like the 80s and 90s cartoon, which was silly. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got from this trailer was, yes, this is going to be a silly film that matches that 80s cartoon that I loved. So in that respect, okay, if I walk into the film not trying to take it seriously, I'll be okay. Secondly, Stephen Amell. I like the show Arrow. I like Stephen Amell as an actor. I think he needs to step into bigger roles. I think he's good enough to do that. Him as Casey Jones, I think will be great. Because the shot that really got me was him going down the going down the street on rollerblades being chased by by uh, Rocksteady. I believe. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is so ridiculous, but so cool. awesome. Yeah. As a hockey fan and a guy who's worn more than his fair share of rollerblades, I was like, that's pretty cool. Now you so, get to and, put your green arrow costume on with your rollerblades. Exactly. He could, he, I want to see him put on some kind of green hood, at least in one scene. <laughs> that would be cool. But then the turtles, of course, seem like they're a little better. A lot of my issues with that first film, too, was how much they messed up the mythology of the turtles. How they lin learned ninjutsu from a book. I mean, that was just like... That made me... I was in theaters and I put my head down and I'm like, Oh my God, what did they do? What did they do? So, a lot of that's kind of out of the way. I think you can have more fun with these characters, and it looks like a more fun movie. So while I, again, don't have high hopes for it, I'll probably go see it. That's probably a good thing. That I mean, I was thinking the same thing when I watched it a couple times. First time I watched it, I was thinking, okay, you know, I know what to expect from these films now. Uh, I cannot take these things seriously. They're mm -hmm. not going to be what I expected back in the 90s. Um, yeah, man. I mean, the dialogue, the first couple of lines in the Ninja Turtles were hilarious. I yeah. actually laughed and, and thought it was, yeah, this is going to be, this is not too bad. How much did you like? I love, I think the thing that really got me too was the fact that they played the tricky song in the trailer. Yeah, that was, I was like, okay, that totally got you into the mood, into the tone. It was really cool. The uh, the garbage truck that shoots out the... Um, the turtle van. The turtle van was bef awesome. Before, was cool. at the uh, in the first film, at the end of that one, they had kind of a van that there was kind of like a first version of the turtle van and now they've stepped it up to the garbage truck yeah. 
It, it's going to be a fun, ridiculous adventure. Uh, seeing the foot in a kind of modern day foot, you know, yeah, version the with the motorcycles. Yeah, the foot really cool. They actually look like ninjas. Yeah, and uh, and I thought it definitely matched the ridiculousness of the turtles too. So I mean, if it, they keep on that equal par, I think it won't be as bad as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope I, not. Like I said, I think a lot that a lot of my problems were with the mythology. Yeah. And now they've got that out of the way, they can have fun with the characters, which is what the turtles were. They need to have fun. They need to interact. They need to show that brotherhood between them and just that the awesome action. That's another thing too, is they're so big and so CGI. They they didn't seem like ninjas. They were more like transformers because they just moved. They were big. They big, didn't move that funky, fast. Yeah, exactly. In the original 1990s film, which I know I have a soft spot in my heart for it, even though people nowadays are like, oh, this is so ridiculous. But I grew up on. It. I have a soft spot. They were, you know, they fought, especially that last action sequence where they're fighting all the uh, Foot Clan. That was a great scene. You could see them actually use their skills, fight as ninjas, etc. With this, they're big CGI creatures. They really just have to, you know, throw punches, not really do any flips or kicks or ninjutsu and stuff like that. So that kind of is an issue for me. Yeah, focus being on the action. The ac action's going to be intense. Uh, back to Casey Jones. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little skeptical. I'm a little skeptical. Uh, I'm so, I, I like, a, like you said, I have a soft spot for the 92 film. Uh -huh. And... I thought that was Casey Jones. I'm not sure the actor's name, but... The guy, I forget who played him in the original. Great job. Movies, but yeah, uh, see, I'm curious to see how this character unfolds. I've only seen one line from he, Casey Jones, and yeah, he nailed that I'm Casey oh, yeah, Jones yeah. line, but yeah, a little skeptical. I think what I'm worried about is, again, Megan Fox. More than She was the number one thing wrong with that first movie. I think they need to put her in the back burner and, again, focus on the Turtles. Even Will Arnett who I like as an actor, everything, I think he's hilarious. In that first movie, his character did not work for me. You need to take those characters, put them in the back burner, focus on the turtles, even focus on Casey Jones because he's a better actor than Megan Fox by far. And a more interesting character as well, too. Exactly, exactly. I want to know what history they set up for him because the history they have of Casey in the current IDW series is really cool, actually. So if they go that route, I'd be interested to see them play that out. Yeah. But, so there's that. Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows. I'll go see it. I won't be too happy about it, though. Um, I'll go into it with open mind. I'll try to go into open mind, and we'll see where that goes. I think it's going to make money. It, it, with the, the it's cast, a, it's going to make money, man. Yeah, exactly. I got you. All right, guy. We're going to step it up now. Ready for this? I don't think I am. I think I okay, am. Okay, people. So, one thing I always thought about was this podcast, Day Spring Discussions, for those who don't know, actually has an X-Men theme to it. The title is based off an X-Men reference. But we don't talk enough about X-Men, I don't think. No, we, we don't. don't. We don't. Luckily, today we can, because the first trailer for the new X-Men film, X-Men Apocalypse, has dropped online, and it was pretty freaking sweet. So in this one here, it's going to be the sequel to X-Men Days of Future Past. It's going to have returning favorites like James McAvoy as Professor X, Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique, Michael Fassbender as Magneto, Nicholas Holt as Beast, as well as has some newcomers such as Ty Sheridan as Cyclops, Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones as Jean Grey, Cody Smith McPhee as Nightcrawler, and Alexandra Ship as Storm, with of course the main villain being played by Oscar Isaac, who is in a little film that's coming out in a few days called Star Wars The Force Awakens. Have you heard of that film at all, Josh? A little bit. Okay, cool. But back to the X-Men, he's going to play Apocalypse. What are your thoughts, Joss? First trailer. First off, I love this trailer. This was <laughs> exactly what I needed at this moment. Um, to get excited, to right? To get excited, exactly. Uh, uh, I got to admit, I was a little skeptical about Apocalypse at first. This has demolished any doubt whatsoever towards this character and, uh, and Oscar Isaac's ability to play this character. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I mean, I think he's going to nail it. I think every, it's going to be a great film, man. So I know Entertainment Weekly had those first pictures that they posted. And everyone ridiculed what Apocalypse looked like because he looked purple and he looked like Ivan Ooze from the Power Rangers film. I get it. So part of me believes that those pictures were just bad lighting, so to speak, and that he really didn't look purple because in this trailer he looks more silver and bluish 
like he does in the comics and in the cartoon and all that, which looks a lot better than a purple guy as well. So part of me believes that that was just Entertainment Weekly's, another one of Entertainment Weekly's mess-ups, so to speak. Another part of me believes that Fox took that backlash and went back and redid Apocalypse. Because you can notice in the trailer, too, they're kind of hiding Apocalypse a little bit. You only have that really one shot where you see his face. And you see kind of up to like his chest or something like that. Yeah, the fence covering his yeah, face. Yeah, exactly. You but see besides, shots behind there's him. There's just one shot where you actually really see a good, a good shot of his, his face and stuff like that. So maybe they're covering that up because they're still fixing stuff about him. Like fixing the coloring or whatever. Sense. But I like the way he looked. Looks from the trailer. If the trailer was the first thing I saw, I'd have a lot more positive buzz about it. But even just based off this trailer, it was awesome. Brian Singer coming back for another X-Men film, and he's already said this won't be his last X-Men film, which is great because the only X-Men films I really liked are the ones that Brian, Brian Singer. Singer has directed. I love that he's kind of fully committed to this franchise now. He's like, okay, it's kind of his baby. You know, he started it. He's come back and given a resurgence. I think this is all about him. He's, he's going to take very special care, not only with this film, but moving forward as well. Getting to the actors, I love that step. First off, we're going to the 80s. I love the 80s. I love 80s music. I love 80s movies. Or it's in the 80s. I'm all about it. I always it's put X-Men awesome. in the 80s, though. I, I, 80s, I don't, I don't they had a lot. Cartoon. X-Men. No, the X-Men, they had their big boom in the early 90s. Actually, that's when, you know, we had the animated series. You had the comic was, you know, flying off the charts and all that. It's when uh, Jim Lee took over drawing, and Chris Claremont, the, the famous X-Men writer who wrote Days of Future Past and Dark Phoenix Saga. That was kind of the heyday of the X-Men. But this film was really cool. Uh, I love seeing the young X-Men. You saw Cyclops, Jean Grey, Ty Sheridan. I've only seen him in a few things, so I'm not sure about how he's going to do with Cyclops. Cyclops would be my favorite X-Men. So in that regards... He's such a whiner. He's well, such a I, I'm whiner. hoping they fix that. Because he's had such... They haven't portrayed him very well in the films. And I hope they fix that. Sophie Turner as Jean Grey. I love her in Game of Thrones. I think she's going to be good. I was curious, though, when she had those couple lines at the beginning of the trailer. It looks like she's going to try to give an American accent. As opposed to her normal... British accent or wherever she's from. I didn't catch too much of that. Yeah, there's the first the first part of it where she's talking to Xavier, and it looked like she had. It seemed like it was only, it was so little. It was just like one sentence, mm -hmm. so you really couldn't get a good sense of if she was what she was trying to do. To me, I watched it a couple times, and it makes it seem like I think she's going to do American accent. So I'm curious how she'll do in that. Mm -hmm. The standout new character for me was Storm. Man, there's that one shot where like it throws down the lightning, and she got her like this kind of standing there. Yeah. That was really cool. But of course, the, the new characters, I'm really, uh, old characters, excuse me, old characters I'm really excited to see as well. Because it looks like these characters we have seen for two other films started off with First Class, and they've evolved, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm very curious to see, because Brian Singer says this is kind of going to be the final trilogy in the First Class trilogy. Final film in the, in the First Class I got trilogy. You. So... Whether I heard James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender have signed on for more movies, allegedly, because they're probably going to pay more money, of course. Jennifer Lawrence, I don't see her coming back for another film, just because they had to bump up her salary, because when First Class started, she wasn't that well known, and then Hunger Games hit, and then she became the biggest star. Big oh, time. Exactly. So now they had to pay her a lot more. I, don't, I know for this one they had to pay her more. I don't know about the last one. But she's blown up so much that I'm pretty sure they're like, we don't want to pay her that much anymore. So I think it's, I can see this be Jennifer Lawrence's last film, which is fine with me. I'd rather focus more on Professor X and Magneto anyway in that regard. But I'm really excited. Of course, the last shot of the trailer, we see yes. bald Professor X. I'm very curious to see how they play that out as well. Why he goes bald, so to speak. I will tell you, though, after the trailer dropped, Brian Singer jumped on Twitter and answered fan questions. And one of the questions he was asked about um, James McAvoy shaving his head, because he really did shave his head Looks like it. for this. And Brian Singer said he did a video of him shaving his head, and he was actually FaceTiming with Patrick Stewart, 
who played the original Professor oh, X man. at the time. <laughs> and Patrick Stewart said, save me some of that hair. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious as well, man. So I'm very curious, yeah, because James McAvoy, when you shave your head like that, that's committing to a role. Oh, man. That's really committed. So this shows the level of commitment that McAvoy has for the film, the character, the franchise, which I enjoy. So Him, uh, McAvoy, uh, Michael Fassbender, and Brian Singer, man, I really feel like they've committed to their characters. They've got and something, yeah. We've really, uh, with all three films, we've seen them develop. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about with watching the trailers, where was... Magneto and Charles' relationship when, when the Days of Future Past ended, and they hate each other. Yeah, well, they don't. I mean, well, they don't hate each other. They've always had that love-hate relationship. I mean, there's one of those things. They respect each other. That's that's one of the best relationships in comics is Magneto and Professor Xavier because they respect each other. They both have the same goal, but they go about it different ways. Everyone's compare always compared them to Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Professor X, they they both want the same goal. Professor X goes about it peacefully. Malcolm X is more violent in his approach. Um, and which is going to play a huge part in, in the role of the movie, especially with yeah. Magneto side by side so with... So, allegedly, P Magneto in this one is supposed to be kind of a little lost as a character. He doesn't know where to go. And that's when Apocalypse comes along and kind of recruits him as one of his horsemen. And, of course, my favorite line of the whole franchise was when uh, Moira Metagor, plays by Rose Brynn, and Alex Summers was like, oh, so he got the Four Horsemen from the Bible. It's like, or the Bible got it from him. Yes. That was like the that, best line. I got chills that, that was line. really awesome. In that regards, too, speaking of Alex Summers, <laughs> again, I'm a Cyclops fan, so I, I got to talk about the Summers family. I didn't like the way he was portrayed in First Class, really. I've read quite a bit of Havoc in the comics. I know this is all a little different, but he was always Scott's younger brother. So here's my fear, I guess, in this, is that the ac actor who plays Alex Summers, he was like a teenager in first class. There's 10 years between first class and Days of Future Past. And we see him in that film. Then there's another 10 years between Days of Future Past and this film, Apocalypse. So that's like 20 years almost, okay? You have Alex Summers and Scott Summers. My fear is they're going to try to do a father-son thing as opposed to brothers. Because 20 years, obviously Scott in this one is a teenager who's probably 15, 16. So between first class and days of future past, who's to say Alex Summers didn't hook up with some girl, get her pregnant, and then leave or whatever. And then in this one, Alex finds out that he has a son. Yeah. He seemed young. Uh, Scott well, seemed young. Yeah, yeah. well, he's, the, him and Jean Grey and Nightcrawler, they're teenagers in this one. You yeah. know, they're the young kids. My fear is they're going to do that, even though it would make the most sense story-wise. But I feel like, first off, it's weird because, again, first class to Apocalypse is almost 20 years. And all the actors don't even look five years older from what they did in first class. <laughs> it's a movie. So that's kind of got me there. But also the fact that if they do that, I feel like they're handcuffing themselves, handcuffing themselves for a Star Jammers film. Alex and Scott's dad, Corsair, is leader of the Star Jammers, an intergalactic group of outlaws, much similar to Guardians of the Galaxy. And I think that is 20th Century Fox's prime example of what they could have in their own version of Guardians of the Galaxy, which is Star Jammers. So if they go the route I'm fearing, that kind of counts out Star Jammers and all that. So I feel like they'll handcuff themselves from something really great in that respect. I love where your head's at. You're, you should be hired on by 20th Century Fox. I should be, man. As one I of should their be. Timeline guys, because you're you're so far ahead of that, as far as me as in that move, man. That's well, uh, well, because you're still reading Grant Morrison's new X Men. Yes. Next up, you have see, like I said, you're I towards mean, you're towards the end of it. Yeah. After this, like I said, you will never read. I will never give you a bad X Men graphic novel because after this, you have Josh Whedon's Astonishing X Men. And then you're going to get into House of M, which sets off a chain of events that completely changes the X-Men for the future. Wow, okay. See, and uh, you're, you're, you're always thinking five moods ahead, man. So, I mean, you may be right. Because I know, I know the habit. potential. I know the potential of the franchise, which is why I've been so frustrated with X3 and X-Men Origins and just all the bad stuff. I know the potential of Cyclops as a character, which makes me frustrated what they've done with him so far in the film. Speaking of which... 
forgot to mention, no Hugh Jackman. Do you think Hugh Jackman will make an appearance in this film? I think he will. I mean, I almost, it's weird seeing an X-Men film without Wolverine in it. I can man. see him making just a, a, a slight cameo like yeah. he did in First Class, but I think they got to let Hugh Jackman go, and I think this is going to be the test. This film is going to be the test of whether the X-Men franchise can survive without Hugh Jackman. I think it is, mainly because of the strong cast they have right now as far as James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. I think the focus is going to be on them, and I'm totally fine with it. I'm fine Hugh Jackman passing on the torch. I don't want to think about who's going to play the next Wolverine because that's just really weird. But I think this is going to be the true test to see if X-Men can live on without Hugh Jackman. Brian Singer, Singer's a genius, man. I think what what better villain to do that? What better film to do oh, that yeah. with within a storyline like Apocalypse? And uh, I mean, I, I'm a big, huge fan of that storyline. You want to know what my hope is of this? Here's my hope. My hope is that Apocalypse is not a one and done villain. My hope is is that Apocalypse carries on, and then something changes because X Men has always been about time travel, alternate realities, stuff like that. From this, we get a time altered. Um, reality and in the next film we get the Age of Apocalypse probably one of the most famous X-Men storylines ever one of my personal favorites I would love if they did that man it would be so amazing I don't think they'll do that but it would be so amazing if they did that but cool anything else you want to comment on X-Men hmm. so okay let's just do this okay of the four of these trailers obviously I think we're both agreed that X-Men is the one we're most excited for Yes. Okay. So if we were to take X-Men, Civil War, or Batman v Superman, based on the trailers, what are you most excited for? X-Men. Really? X-Men. Yeah, I, I know you put Civil War first. Civil War just because Marvel has not turned out a bad film yet. Minus, of course, you can you can make an exception or instead for Iron Man 3. I know I wasn't a big fan of the second Thor movie as well, but they were still okay. 20th Century Fox has given us several bad X-Men movies. Warner Brothers has given us several bad DC character films. So <laughs> Putting Mar that aside. Marvel, Marvel has a better track record, it plus it seems better. Like I, I was talking with uh, someone the other day about it too. I think a lot of people are more excited for Civil War because it, we're more invested in the characters at this point too. I could see that. I see your point. Me, I'm writing the, the uh, momentum of the last X-Men film. Yeah. I really oh, love yeah. Days of Future, Future Past. Um, that momentum, the success of that film, I think is going to carry over to this film, and it's, it's going to even get b even bigger, man. I mean, who knows? They may outdo Marvel with this one. They may make more money than Marvel, I think. We'll see, we'll see. We may have to make a wager here. <laughs> we may, we may. <laughs> so next up, we're going to stick in the Marvel Universe and go over to the Netflix series so we can get a little bit into the, that whole thing. So, veteran Scott Buck, who is a person who worked on Six Feet Under and the TV show Dexter, has been tapped to be the showrunner for Netflix's new series, Iron Fist. Heroic Hollywood and ComicBook.com is said that this new series is described as follows. Retur returning to New York after being missing for years, Daniel Rand fights against the criminal element corrupting New York City with his incredible kung fu mastery and ability to summon the awesome power of the fiery Iron Fist. No timeline for Iron Fist has yet to be announced. Right now, Netflix just put out their Jessica Jones series, as well as they're working on productions of Luke Cage and the second season of Daredevil, both of which will come out next year. So they said that Iron Fist probably won't premiere until 2017. Now, when they first announced the Marvel... Netflix series where they're going to have four character shows and then they're all going to come together for a fifth show, The Defenders. The number one character show I was excited about was Iron Fist. The Immortal Iron Fist run, I think it's like five volumes. I One of my favorite runs in comic books, especially in the Marvel series, it made me really f get to know the character of Iron Fist, got me to like him really well. The new Iron Fist series I'm not really a big fan of. But the old one by Ed Brubaker, really great. Ed Brubaker, of course, you know him. He wrote all the Captain America, Death of Captain America stuff. 
big X-Men writer as well. You'll get to see a lot more of his stuff as you read more in the X-Men. So I was really a fan of that series. So that got me excited for Iron Fist. Of course, I was excited for Daredevil, but Iron Fist has a lot of potential. He's not well known. I'm very curious to see what they do with it, how they, or who they get to play, the main character. I'm excited that this, the ball is actually rolling on this series. Yeah. You know, I'm, a fan of the, I'm a fan of the character, so I'm excited stuff is in motion. Man, it's, this is a whole other universe, I feel like, that's you know rolling together. Exactly, because you're still going through Jessica Jones, right? I'm still going through what Jessica Jones. What episode are you on? Uh, I'm on episode five, Okay, I and, yeah, and how are you liking it? Through. Uh, I love it, man. And more than that, I think my girlfriend loves it, too. Yeah. Dude. She's waking up telling me she's having dreams that she's Jessica Jones. I'm like, what? Character? You getting into comic book characters? I have those dreams all the time about Superman, but then I usually fall out of a tree trying to fly. All right. All right. Well, um, I, man, I mean, Jessica <coughs> Jones is great. That whole universe, I'm, I'm hooked, dude. And um, I got to say, a um, little fun fact, I, I don't know much about this Iron Fist mm -hmm. character until you dropped a little bit of a synopsis on me, mm -hmm. and you hooked me to the character, man. I, I, after you were reading it, I, I couldn't wait to read a little Iron Fist. So, just to give you a little background, here's kind of his origin story, is he, um, he's a, he was a son of a billionaire, and his father was obsessed with this mystical or mythical kingdom which has you know secrets of kung fu mastery and the power of the iron fist so he took his wife his business partner and his son out to the arctic to go find this mystical city and his business partner who was in love with his wife killed him and said hey we have to go let's get out of here his wife of course was horrified by it and told his son to run and she died and his business partner survived and went back to take over the Rand Corporation. His son, Daniel, got picked up by the... I forget what the name of the city is now. I totally forget. Anyway, picked up by the mystical people they were looking for, trained in Kung Fu, and what the Iron Fist is, is each generation, they take their best warrior to go and fight against this dragon because the dragon has this egg, and anyone who gets inside the egg will gain the power of the Iron Fist, which is strength, speed, um, healing factor, and yeah. of course, all that stuff. So, so, cool. Daniel, so cool. Daniel was the best of his generation. He got the power of the Iron Fist, and upon doing that, went back to New York City to, again, take control of not only his father's company, to get revenge on the man who wronged his family, all that stuff. Revenge. So how does how's that story feel for you? Oh man, I mean that's that's what hooked me the first time, dude. I mean revenge, <coughs> uh, battle for you know greed. It kind of it kind of reminds me like just reading that off. It kind of reminds me almost like Green Arrow. You know he was abandoned on an island for years, trained himself, came back, fought in the city, etc. Yeah, I, I mean it's a nice little it's gonna kind of nice little mix. Speaking of, of which, and Stephen Arrow Amell would and, play a good Iron Fist, but anyway, Stephen who? Stephen Amell would play a good Iron Fist. He looks like him, at least I think, but maybe I'm just too much on Stephen Amell right now. Let's move on. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be cool. Out of the Netflix series, when they were first announced, the one I was least excited for was Jessica Jones. I like Jessica Jones better than Daredevil. I think it's a better show. Now the one I'm least excited for is Luke Cage, because in Jessica Jones, we see Luke Cage, and at first I think he's okay as far as the actor but as the series goes on, not to spoil anything, I'm not a big fan of the actor. I don't think he does. Towards the end of the series, I'm not a big fan of what he brings to Luke Cage. So now I'm not that excited for the Luke Cage series. Well, I have no expectations for this Luke character Cage whatsoever. Um, I've, I, it, you know, as the episodes are going on, more is being revealed about this character. Uh, I know I might lose my girlfriend at some point to to Luke Cage, the character himself. She's in love <laughs> with his character. Mm -hmm. Uh, I Just mean, get, get, get a better tan. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> better, no, and get bigger. Get bigger too. Whatever. Jesus. Yeah, exactly. As a monster. Um, yeah, I, I think I agree with you though. I mean, I wasn't excited for Jessica Jones. And uh, man, Marvel knows what the hell they're doing. I think they dude, got man, they got people. Just, they got the right people on it, man. Yeah, man, I'm hooked. And uh, yeah. I, honestly, I I can't wait for Daredevil. Oh, that's what I'm excited about. Even season all two, about Iron bring Fist, in Punisher Jones. and Elektra. That's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm pumped for that. Okay. So we got to switch gears because when I wrote the show notes this week, I felt like we had too many comic book and superhero stuff on here. So I had to throw a couple things in here. And we spent so much time talking about these trailers that luckily we're not going to talk a lot about the other superhero stuff I have. 
So we're going to switch ga gear over to Lionsgate Studios. So it was announced yesterday that Mockingjay Part 2 of the Hunger Games franchise won the box office again for the fourth week in a row. So this has Lionsgate already setting up and saying they're going to continue the Hunger Games franchise possibly, possibly in some prequels. Lionsgate Entertainment Vice Chairman Michael Burns reportedly said that, much like the Harry Potter franchise, the Hunger Games will live on and on and on. That means fans should get ready for prequels. He said, quote, The one thing that kids say they miss from the early Hunger Games films was that there are no arenas in this latest film. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter quotes Byrne as saying, If we, want, we went backwards, there obviously would be arenas. According to THR, Burns also hinted at potential prequels, sequels, or reboots for Twilight, The Expendables, and Saw. The studio has already begun to build uh, upon the success of The Hunger Games with theme park attractions, has sought to continue the franchise as well with television series and virtual reality games in development. So not only Hunger Games, but we're talking about Lionsgate actually continuing other franchises such as Twilight. Lisa and I had this debate where at the end of the Hunger Games film, I was like, they're going to make more. She's like, no, there's nowhere to go with it. I'm like, yes, there is. Backwards. <laughs> That's what it is. You it's keep, a trend now. If you can't go forward, you go backwards. Let's you know? make some prequels. Because you can't make... Exactly. That's what Harry Potter's doing. Yeah. Harry Potter's making prequels. Everybody's doing it, it seems like. That's what it is. They have a multi-billion dollar franchise. No studio that makes that kind of money from a franchise is going to let it go they're going to let it go when people stop seeing the movie. Transformers, Paramount keeps making those Transformer movies and they get worse and worse. But guess what? People still go see them. They still make a crap load of money. Until people stop seeing them, they're going to keep making them. And that's the thing with Hunger Games or, God forbid, Twilight. I do not want to see another I Twilight movie. I do not want to see another God, Twilight God, no. I don't film. want to sit in another one of those again. Hunger Games, I wouldn't be... I'd be more interested in seeing a Hunger Games prequel... But I don't think it's one of those things, like I said, they're going to bleed this stone dry until there's nothing to get out of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right now they have a, a, a goose that lays golden eggs. You think they're really going to stop? Oh, not, no, not at all. Exactly. golden eggs. I mean, gonna... I, at this point, I'm convinced Warner Brothers has J.K. Rowling somewhere like chained to a desk and be like, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know if it's that violent, but uh, it, I'm sure you're I, pretty close. I think Lions get like do the same thing with Suzanne Collins as well, but they're going to keep you know doing it because Jake. I'm not I'm talking about Harry Potter, which I guess just to get off topic a little bit, the new Harry Potter prequel film, Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. The trailer is allegedly supposed to drop tomorrow as well. Tomorrow, you got all these great trailers coming out, man. I feel like trailers, I feel man. like when I go see Star Wars in a few days, I'm going to see all these oh, trailers again. Man, that would just, is what it's going to be. I might faint. I'm going to faint from all these trailers, then I'm going to be like, "Oh, these are all fantastic trailers." Wait, now I get to see Star Wars. Best day ever. Best Christmas ever. <laughs> anyway, going back to it, I'm not excited for Hunger Games or Twilight or Lionsgate. I can see why they're doing it. I'm just not too keen on the idea. I think the story has been said. Well, uh, my interest was at its uh, peak with Hunger Games when the, with the arenas, man. I love the, the games. The games, how, you know, how brutal they were. That's what caught my interest. But once they started going into more of the war of the actual yeah. Hunger Games, I gotta admit, I lost yeah, interest. I, think in it I, I still haven't seen the last film. This so. The second film of the Hunger Games is still my favorite. Uh, the second Hunger Games Catching Fire, that was my favorite. Yeah. So... I think, again, they want to get back to the arenas because it's called Hunger Games, so they want to get back to the Hunger Games. I can see them in the prequel doing, like, a first Hunger Games, like, what was the first Hunger Games like, and they can do that in a film. That'd be cool. I think people would be more interested in that respect. But that. also doing a prequel, going back to Jennifer Lawrence. She's a big star now. She gets paid big dollars. If you go back to a prequel where you get a Hunger Games movie that does not have Jennifer Lawrence in it, you don't have to pay her. Yeah. Because well. now, but now, again, it's one of those things now, just like Hugh Jackman with X Men. Can the Hunger Games franchise survive without Jennifer Lawrence? I feel like we need to get off this whole little trend of actor, actresses <laughs> being the main support of the, the franchise. Like, do, do we really, can we not make an X Men movie without Wolverine? Can we not make a Hunger Games without Jennifer Lawrence? I mean, I don't think it depends how big the franchise is. It, it really takes the test of what's bigger, the actor or actress or the franchise. And that's what it is. You 
this next X-Men movie, if it doesn't have Hugh Jackman in it, we're going to see. Can X-Men survive on its own? I think it can. I think there's enough fans out there who have fallen in love with the movies and the property as well. Hunger Games, honestly, I'm not so sure. Yeah, uh, and you have also, I mean, speaking of Harry Potter, can... Um, can they survive? Can a Harry Potter movie survive so, without Harry Potter? Yeah. We shall see about that as well. Cool. All right, so I'm going to skip a couple of things here, and we're going to go straight to my favorite segment. Star Wars! Yes, kids, in three days, I am off to see The Force Awakens. Tonight in L.A., Hollywood, is the premiere of the film. Ooh. I know. A lot of the, the, the movie guys that I follow on Collider Movie Talk, they're going to see the movie tonight. I'm super jealous that people will see this film before I will. But in keeping with my no spoilers theme, tonight, after about maybe 9 o'clock or so, I am turning off all social media and pretty much turning off the internet. For three days. I thought so. I, I, thought am, might. I do not want anything spoiled. I am just done with it. So for three days until I actually see Star Wars The Force Awakens, the, like, after 9 o'clock tonight, the next Facebook status you'll probably see of mine is going to see Star Wars The Force Awakens. About to pee my pants or something <laughs> along those lines. Definitely. So I went through the prequels last week. I read the graphic novels. Some good graphic novels Marvel's producing. I'll tell you that much. Some good Star Wars stuff Marvel's got going on. I still got to finish the original trilogy, which I'll probably do that, save that for the day of, and I'll watch the original trilogy the day of, and we'll go through there. How far are you on your prep, man? Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, I'm, <coughs> I still got a ways to go. Probably going to knock them out here uh, tonight. They're out the week. We don't go see it until Sunday, so okay. I got a little bit more time. Yeah, a little more time. I got you. That's cool. So we're going to go into a few Star Wars. Uh, I think I'm just going to combine these two stories into one. Basically, the first one is that J.J. Abrams went on... Some kind of media, I don't remember. And he said, there is no post credit scene in this Star Wars film. post credit scenes for these kind of movies have become kind of famous, especially with the Marvel and comic book movies. But he went online saying there is no post credit scene. The entire movie is in the movie. Some people were thinking you might get a teaser of the next Star Wars film, Rogue One, at the end of this one. But no word has been to confirm that either. And speaking... Keeping with the Rogue One theme, Kathleen Kennedy went on and talked more about the Star Wars franchise as a whole. And they were talking about how after this, the Star Wars anthology films, you're going to get Rogue One, which will be set between episodes 4 and 5. Then you're going to get a Han Solo movie, which is set before episode 4. But Kathleen Kennedy went and talked to film and said, no, no, no. It just so happens to be Rogue One is the precursor to A New Hope. And yes, this Han Solo idea, but I would not argue that we are setting up any kind of prequel notion with these standalone films. I think that's just so far a coincidence. To be perfectly honest, we have changed the order of those at the last minute, so that's not the intention at all. We've changed the order of those, meaning that there was a Star Wars movie that Josh Trank was supposed to do, Josh Trank, of course, now the infamous director of Fantastic Four, dropped out. And people said that was supposed to be a Boba Fett movie that takes place after Return of the Jedi. So Kathleen Kennedy just kind of confirming that, yes, we're going to get Star Wars movies that are not part of the episode movies, but they're not all going to be prequels as well. And of course, as it was said earlier or announced earlier, we're getting a Star Wars movie every year from now till infinity that all will be connected so hearing these two things josh wow. what do you think i'm gonna sit, let you go and then i'll go off my tangent well um these films are gonna be epic i think i can't i there's no doubt in my mind i'm gonna love every single one of these films rogue one um whether it, we're really gonna get a han solo solo film or not uh, Force. I'm still. Gonna, I'm still so focused on Force Awakens, man. I know, I right? Mean, it's, it's weird. It's hard for me to think about even anything else. Because I've been so focused on the Force Awakens for like three years now. It's gonna be here, and now after this, I'm like, okay, should I focus on Rogue One that's coming out in a year, or should I focus on Episode Eight that's coming out in a year and a half? Yeah. And that's the thing too is like, you don't have to wait three years. When I was a kid, loving Star Wars, the Re Return of the Jedi premiered in theaters two months before I was born. I grew up on the original trilogy thinking there was no more Star Wars. Then we got the prequel films. And then after the prequel films, after Revenge of the Sith, 
we thought, okay, normal, no more Star Wars movies after this because George Lucas said it. And then Disney bought Lucasfilm, and guess what? It now it's all Star Wars, man. We're going to get a Star Wars movie every year from now till I probably die. And it's going to be weird to think, like, my daughter is always going to have Star Wars in her life. I grew up not thinking I was ever going to get any more Star Wars movies, but now she's going to grow up getting Star Wars just every year. They're never... She's never going to know the dark times that I went through. The, the, the delay, the period. Exactly. The, 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 the sorrow of what I went through. But I think it's awesome. Kathleen Kennedy going on saying, yes, we are going to get more Star Wars movies. And they're not all going to be prequels, which is awesome. I'd like to think there's a few of them I'd like to see. Based on what you know about Star Wars, Josh, what supporting or side character would you like to see get his own movie or anything you'd like to explore in the Star Wars universe? Uh, the bounty hunter Boba Fett. Boba Fett would be one I would be really interested in seeing. Where uh, there's, um, but there's so much history with all the characters. Uh, Boba Fett just happens to be one of my favorites. Um, I'd love to see what happened to him after the Return of the Jedi. Uh, uh, did he survive? I always thought that his death was, well, his his so-called death was just so quick and yeah, allegedly so. In every interpretation post Return of the Jedi. Whether it be the old legend books or even it appears like the new canon, Boba Fett climbed out of the Sarlacc pit. He survived because in the the trailer for Battlefront, you see Boba Fett and he's flying just over the Sarlacc pit. And he flies, you know, kind of close to it, keeps going. And he's like, not a second time or not again. Not gonna happen. So it again, makes you man. realize that he probably this is you know post Jedi he got out of the Sarlacc pit. I think. Yeah, and I've always been curious what happened. I mean, he yes, he was a part of the original clone uh -huh. clones. So uh, to speak. So to speak. Uh, there, there's a lot of rumors going on, but as of right now, canon, yes, he is uh, the kid we saw in episode two. And, um, and I mean, there's so much you can do there. I mean, they're gonna make a film for uh, until infinity. Oh that's just God. that statement alone so is so overwhelming. Exciting. Like I'm like, man, I don't even know where to begin. I know, right? Oh, so another thing is the post credit scene. I'm not of the full mind that we're not going to get something in the post credits, whether it be just a sound, like because in episode two, at the end of the credits of episode two, you hear the Darth Vader breathing, actually. Wow. Yeah. Post credits or not, I'm still going to sit through all of the credits just out of respect for the franchise. I can see why they don't want to put a Rogue One teaser in there because it's going to because it's a prequel. It's not part of. It's not a continuation of the story of Episode 7. So going back and showing Rogue One, while it'd be good to kind of tease people for this film, people that might not know the, that Rogue One is coming out, going back and teasing a prequel that's set 30 or 40 years before, I can see where the confusion is. I'd much rather see a teaser to the next continuation of Episode 7, which is Episode 8, yeah. which they've already started filming. I can see why they won't, because maybe they haven't filmed enough, or maybe it's... They don't want to show anything. We may get something. We may get something. I feel like we're going to get something from Rogue One, whether it be a trailer at the beginning, some kind of teaser, something. I feel like we're going to get something about Rogue One. But It'd be a great opportunity for them to plant a seed because not a whole lot of the society knows it's, anything about this exactly. Rogue and One. The general and audience story. doesn't know that Rogue One is coming in a year, so they need to start doing that, I believe. What I, uh, I'm thinking about here is Everything is new now, man. This is nothing has nothing to do with the original saga. This is something that they this is their baby. They can start from scratch. And that to me makes me just want to sit back and like, man, I trust them, man. I mean, let I do. them do their thing and So here's the difference between Star Wars and say X-Men or Civil War or whatever. Civil War, X-Men, Batman v Superman, these are characters that are based off of comic books that I read. I've known these characters for years. I've read all their stories, and they're, the filmmakers are plucking these storylines into the movies. So I kind of know what's happening with those yeah. characters in the film. So I'm not afraid of spoilers in that regards. With Star Wars, they said this is a completely new story. This is not, I've read a lot of stuff post Return of the Jedi, a lot of comics, a lot of books. But when they were making this film, they said, hey, we're not going to do an interpretation of this storyline, or the Thrawn trilogy, or whatever, our Dark Empire. So that's why I don't want any spoilers, because it's completely fresh. I don't know where these characters are going to be. I don't know where they're going. So in that regards, comparing it to other franchises, I know what's going to happen in those. I've read those books. I know they're drawing from that. 
this there this is completely fresh. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be spoiled at all. That's why I've you know tuned out everything. Why I'm turning off the internet for three days. The seventeenth is gonna be an epic day for you, man. You're you're gonna it's probably, you probably may have it all revealed to you there, but no. I, and, and my fear is that someone's gonna to try to message me or send me something to spoil something, and I I swear to God, whoever does that, I will just I'll, don't project it, man. I don't project never talk it. to them yeah, again. Don't even think like that. Uh, okay. It won't be me, man. It won't be me. Oh no! That much. Oh no! So next week, it's got we got a hectic work schedule next week. I work early next week, so I don't know when we're going to be able to do next week's show. Of course, next week being Christmas as well. Mm -hmm. But should we get the time to do a show next week? It's going to be all talking about Star Wars The Force Awakens. We'll have both seen the film by then. I probably will have seen it twice, of course. Because I'm planning on going to like just some like a, like a Sunday or a Monday. I'll go to some late night show, just random or whatever, and just see it a second time. Hopefully. So next week, if we do a show, which I'm planning on it, whenever we get the time, we're going to talk all about the movie. So get ready for that. Yeah. Cool? Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Run a bit over, of course. Sorry, but uh, we had a lot to talk about. So this is going to be it for us. Um, as If you have any questions, comments, always hit us up, dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. I have not gotten one email yet since we started this thing, which is okay. It's okay. I know people are listening. All two of you are listening. So it's growing. It's growing. It's a growing audience. I hope so. I really hope so because I love doing this. I enjoy doing this. So I hope we're not just sitting here talking to each other. Even if we are, it's still fun. Yeah, exactly. It's still uh, fun. This is my opportunity to vent. Exactly. Exactly. It's great. We can get this out now so other people aren't bored by this stuff. So uh, You can find me on social media, Twitter or Instagram. Slim, S-L-Y-M, Dayspring12. And I swear to God, if anybody ruins Star Wars for me, I will castrate them. Josh, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram. I, I am Batman247. All right, guys. So that's it for us for this week. Until then, may the Force be with us all.